Today we're going to be learning Sukkah Daf Lamed Hey. We're going to start with etrog. So if you remember, we ended yesterday's shir with a whole list of problematic or, or non-problematic etrogim. Today we're going to get into the details of most of them and understand them better. Tanu Rabbanan, the first question as usual is going to be, how do we know that when it says pre etzadar, it actually means an etrog? Pre etzadar, etz shetam etzo upri yoshavet. Pre etzadar means... <coughs> From pre etzadar, we're going to assume... It has to be that the eights and the pre, because it says pre eights, the fruit of the tree, it has to be the tree and the fruit taste the same. What would that be? Where do you have such a thing? Some people say, how, why is that the case? Because the etrog is a very thick, uh, much thicker than a lemon, let's say, a much thicker peel. The peel is very bitter, tastes like the tree itself. The aim of peel pulling, but what about peel pulling? Peel pulling, we mean peppers, black peppers, okay? Not red peppers and those kind of things. They don't grow on trees. But you could say then it's a peppercorn. Kiditanya, as it says in a brighta. Hayah Our topic now is orla, which we talked about yesterday, right? Not being able to eat fruits for three years on the tree. Shenemal, the pasuk says, unitatem kol etz. Now it says, let's read the whole pasuk. When you get to the land, when you get to the land of Israel, and you plant a fruit tree. The first three years is called Orla. It cannot be eaten. Now notice it says it can't be eaten. That means obviously it's only referring to fruit trees. So why does it say in the beginning of the verse, a fruit tree, when already from the end it's clear we mean fruit trees. So, Obviously, it's a fruit tree. So why does it say it's a fruit tree? To teach you, again, we have it's ma'achal. Has to be the eating of the eights is like the eating, right? The fruit is like eating the tree. This eights ma'achal comes to teach you that also peppercorns are high of an orla, same thing. You have to wait three years. And it teaches you also that the land of Israel is not devoid of any beautiful thing, any anything at all. Everything is found there. As it says in the verse in the Torah, which we read not so long ago, right in Prashat Akiv, it says, right, it's a land that everything is in it. So they say, why wouldn't you assume it's peppercorns then? We already have a source that talks about peppercorns being the fruit and the tree taste the same. So they say, the reason there is because there's no other way. And it's what by us, an etrog, there's no way to bring a peppercorn instead of an etrog. What's the issue? How will we do it? If you take one, it won't be noticeable that you're actually taking it because you're ending up with, right? It's, you're, no one's going to see it. A little peppercorn in your hand, it won't even be noticeable. It's very interesting because it shows, again, we talked about beauty. What is beauty? Beauty is that people see something beautiful. In this case, you're not, right? If you're not using it, then it's not, if no one can see it, then it's almost not beautiful because it can't be seen. It's another interesting idea here that it has to be seen. We haven't really seen that before. What if we say, what if we say take two or three? Here it says a cha, but it really should be pre amarachmana, right? Um, pre echad amarachmana. The Torah says pre etzadar in the singular form. So therefore, it doesn't say take two or three. So therefore, there's no way it could be peppercorns, and that's why we'll assume it's an etrog and not a peppercorn. Again, strange hava minas, as we say, right? Strange theories that one would think that you could use a peppercorn as an etro, right? At least when we suggested a rimon, a, quin, a pomegranate, or a quince, at least there was, you know, something somewhat similar to an etro. But to think that you could take um, a peppercorn seems quite strange. But again, they get it from the verse here, shatam etzo priyoshave. Rebbe Yomer, another drasha on this. Al tikre hadar, don't say hadar beautiful, ela hadir like a pen, a pen of sheep. Just like a pen of deers, there's big ones, small ones, there's pure ones, you know, uh, perfect ones, and there's blemished ones. Again, reference to sacrifices, blemished animals. Hachanamid, likewise, an etro comes in all different forms. Yeshbog doli muktanim, there's big and small. Tmimim ubalei mumim, there's good ones, and then there's problematic ones, which we started discussing in our Mishnah. 
So then the Gemara says, what are you talking about? All fruits are like that. It's no difference between an etrog and any other fruit. So one must say like this. Just like in a sheep of pe- uh, pen of sheep, the, a sheep's pen, there's big ones and small ones, right? The, the, the small ones come, there's big ones around. Likewise, this is like we said, and we're going to see in a second, they're going to bring it also. It stays on the tree for a long time, or they, they ripen at all different times. So you have big ones on the tree when there's also small ones. Normally, they start all small, right? I have a lemon tree right now. All the lemons are very small. They're going to grow big over time, but they all kind of grow at the same rate, but not in an natural tree. Even other trees, like a lemon tree, sometimes it blooms a few times a year. Or I have a star fruit tree where it blooms four times a year sometimes. But still, they mostly ripen all at the same time, okay? And it's not like they keep ripening at all different rates. And that's what's unique about an etrog. Rabbi Yavau Amar, al hadar, ela davar shedar bi'ilano mishana l'shana. Again, the same idea of the drasha, that it stays on the tree from year to year. Ben Azay Omer, al hadar, ela hidor. Okay, hidor from the shashon of hydro, water. Shekem belashon yivani, because in the Greek, korim lemayim hidol, water is height, right? Hydro. Ve'ezehu hi, shegadel al kol mayim, heve omer ze etrog. It's an etrog that grows with any water. It could be water by the rain, it could be water by the field, by, um, you know, by, uh, you know, uh, hand watering, the people could water it themselves. It grows with any kind of water. Um, I just wanted to check one thing here. But I guess it needs water. Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out, don't all need water? Yes. Yeah. So they, they do ask this question. Other trees also need water. So some people say that it's not exactly the best proof that it's, that it's an etrog. But again, we have a tradition that it's an etrog. It's not the greatest answer. It's a better question than answer. This we already know, my timer, what's the reason? Because it's supposed to be burned. It's as if it doesn't have any sort of requisite amount because it's supposed to be burned. My timer. So now we get into a machlok at why it's pasul because of Orla. Orla has two things. One is it's you can't eat it. Number two, you can't benefit from it. If you can't benefit from it, then it has no financial value to you because you can't use it at all. So please give Rabbi Chia Bar Avin for Rabbi Asi. They have a machloket about this. Charama one said the fisha aim badin mamon because it doesn't have any. I'm sorry, I skipped a line. Fisha aim baheter achila. One said it's because you can't eat it. The charama the fisha aim badin mamon. And one said because it has no financial value because you can't use it. Kasal kadate. They thought originally that man debai heter achila lo bai di mamon. Man debai di mamon lo bai heter achila. That these were. Mutually exclusive. The one who held it has to be something you can eat didn't hold that it has to have financial value. And the one who held it has to have financial value in order to use for an etro didn't hold that you had to be able to eat it. But they had a problem with that. None, it says in our Mishnah, if it's truma tamea, truma, which is impure, which we said you can't eat it, but you can use it for burning, it's disqualified. So if you say it's because you can't eat it, it makes perfect sense. But the one who said, you can use it to cook your food because you can make a fire with it. So it does have financial value. So why would it be disqualified? Therefore, they conclude that they misunderstood. Everyone says you need heter achila. You need to be able to eat it. The issue is, and therefore the truma tamea is no good because you can't eat it. The question is, does it also need to have financial value? One held it needs to be eaten, but it doesn't need to have financial value in order to use it for your etro. Umar saval. The other one held dim mamon nami bi'inan. It needs also to have financial value. Both of you can eat it and financial value. My benayu, when are you going to have a difference the halacha between them? That's a classic, why? But only a libe de rabbi meir. Now let's see. 
Rabbi Meir held, there's a big mafloka about Master Shani. Again, what is it? It's the second tithe. You bring a tenth of your produce. After you give a tenth to the lady, you bring a tenth of your produce in years one, two, four, and five of the Shemitah cycle. You bring to Jerusalem and you eat it there or you redeem it on a coin and you buy stuff in Jerusalem with that and eat it there. Is this your money? Because me and you're going to eat it. Or is it considered mamon gavoa? Because it's called sanctified. It's called kodesh. We'll see that later also. Since it's called kodesh, Rabbi Meir says it's actually money of God. Now you're allowed to eat it, but it's not your own. So that means it doesn't have deem mamon. It has no financial value to you because it's not your own. The rabbis say, no, no, no. It's mamon hediot. It's considered your own money. Okay, hediot is regular, not gavoa. Gavoa is God. Hediot is your own. So if you hold that it, it's your own, then it obviously has financial value also, and you can eat it. But if you hold it's Mamon Gavoa, Rabbi Meir, then you're going to hold that it, it doesn't have any financial value to you because it's not your own. And yet you can eat it. So that's going to be the Nachkamina, whether you say Achila only, or you also need the Mamon. So Lamanda Amar Lefisha'im Baheter Achila, Hareyesh Baheter Achila. So therefore that's enough, and you can use it for your etro. So therefore, according to Rabbi Meir, according to the rabbis, no matter what, it's, it has dim mamon and heterachila. But according to Rabbi Meir, it only has heterachila. You can eat it, but it's not, doesn't have financial value. So now we have, let's start back from the beginning. We had a machlok, Rabbi Chia bar and Rabbi Asi. Is it heterachila or is it that you need heterachila and, heter, and dim mamon? So Tistaim de Rabbi Asi, we didn't know who said what. So now they're going to conclude that Rabbi Asi is the one who holds Damar Lafisha'im Badim Mamon. Why is that? Because look what Rabbi Asi said about the Nafkamina case. Rabbi Asi, Etrot Shama Ser Shini, Ledivre Rabbi Meir, and Adam Yutsebo Yedechovato Biyomto. Ledivre Chachamim, Adam Yutsebo Yedechovato Biyomto. He said there's a machlok at Rabbi Meir and the rabbis. Whether you be Yosef with Maser Shani be Yerushalayim or not, and what's the difference between them? Whether or not it has Dim Mamon. So therefore, it must be since Rabbi Asi said this, he must be the one who holds you need Dim Mamon to stay in. We can conclude this. Gufa. Now we're going to go more in depth into this Maser Shani case and what Rabbi Asi said. Amar Rabbi Asi. Again, we're just going to quote it right now. The same thing we just said a second ago. Etrog shomaser sheni. If you have an etrog of maser sheni, ledivre rabbi meir en adam yitzebo yudei chavato biyom tov. By the way, he says on yom tov, he obviously means for all seven days. You can't be yotze. You can't use it to fulfill your mitzvah. According to rabbi meir, again, because you don't have, it doesn't have any financial value because it's considered money of God's, property of God's. But ledivre chachamim who think it's your own property, adam yitzebo yudei chavato biyom tov. Furthermore, rabbi Asi said more than this. Matzah shama ser sheni. Now we're going to move into other mitzvah. Matzah for Pesach. Ledivir Rabbi Meir and Adam Yitzay Bo Yedei Chavato Pesach. We're talking about the obligation to eat matzah on the first night. You can't use matzah maser sheni. Also has to be your own. Ledivir Chachamim, Adam Yitzay Bo Yedei Chavato Pesach. But again, according to the rabbis who think it's your own, mamon kediot, no problem. Isa, another mitzvah. Isa shal maser sheni. If you have a dough that you made of maser sheni, ledivir Rabbi Meir, p'tura min achala. It's exempt from the obligation to take chala. Why is that? Because it's not your own. Ledivrei chachamim. We think it's your own. Chayevet bechala. You have to take chala. Here comes a question. Mat kiflar of papa. Now, where do we get this idea that all of these mitzvot have to be your own and you're not obligated or you can't fulfill your obligation if it doesn't belong to you? So etrog, we already learned because it says, right? Well, we'll see also. We'll see it inside in a second, but let's see. So now he says the following. Matkif la Rav Papa. Rav Papa questions. Isa, I understand. Dechtiv reshit arisotechem. You have to take the first of your doughs. Yours, just like by etrog and lulav, it says your own. Lekachtem lachem. Also, this has to be your own. Etrog namiktiv lachem. Misha lachem. It has to be owned by you. That's why we understand has to be owned by you. It has to have your own value, right? Financial value for you. Ela matzah, miktiv matzatchem. But by matzah, there's no verse that says the matzah has to be yours, right? We learned through all the Masech HaPesachim. We didn't see any reference to that. We learn lechem lechem. Okay, we learn it from a verse. It says, by, we learn it from Gzera Shava, the same word appearing in Tupsukim. Ktiv hacha lechem oni, we know that the bread is called bread of affliction. Uchtiv hatam vahayaba och lechem ni lechem When it talks about chala, it says when you eat from the bread of the land. 
מה להלן משלכם ולא משל מעשר, just like there, it's from your own and not מעשר, right, it can't be מעשר שני according to רבי מאיר, אף כאן משלכם ולא משל מעשר, also there by Pesach, that's how we learn by Pesach, because of Gzeir Shava to the Arisotichem. So now that's Rabbi Asi. Rabbi Asi says this applies to all three mitzvot, chala, um, etrog, and matzah, all have to be your own. Therefore, according to Rabbi Meir, who says the master shen is not your own, you can't be Yose with master shen. Lema Maseyad, why don't we bring this ton of itic source that seems to prove what Rabbi Asi says? Isa shal master sheni, p'tura min achala divrei Rabbi Meir, v'chachamim obrim chayevet v'chala. Here you have exactly what Rabbi Asi says. In a brighta, that Isa of Maser Sheni is exempt from Chala, according to Rabbi Meir, but is obligated in Chala, according to the rabbis. So the Gemara says, what are you talking about? Lema Maseyale. Lema Maseyale, let us suggest that this brighta proves what he was trying to say. To say, he, he, it's exactly what he was saying. What do you mean it, it may prove it? Of course it proves it. It's exactly what he says. So they say, no, no, no. He said it about three things. The brighta only says it by Isa. And why would Isa be any different? And maybe you can't learn from there to the others. Would you say, theoretically, you could say, just like by Isa, they argue with the rest. And that's why we suggested that maybe all these three are a machloket, but it's not clear from the Brayta. Maybe a do is different in the chiyuv and chala because the word arisotechem appears twice in the verse. Because and the verse is there because it appears twice. Maybe they want to. It's it's stressed twice to say it must be your own. But maybe the others don't need to be your own in the same way that maybe master shani could fulfill your obligation and the others, even according to Rabbi Meir, who thinks it doesn't belong to you. So therefore, it's not a clear proof because he said it in three and the bright only said it in one and not clear that you were learned from that one to all the others. Now we're going to continue along our list in the Mishnah. Disqualify, right? It became impure. Truma that becomes impure, you're supposed to burn. But again, you can benefit from the burning of it. Delay, but you can't eat it. So what do they say? Why is it psula? Very clearly. Delay beheter achila. Remember, everybody says it has to be something you can eat and you can't eat it. If it's pure truma, you shouldn't take it. But remember, if you did, it's okay. So again, we have a debate. We don't know who says what. Truma, pure truma, you're not allowed to cause truma to be impure. Now, what happens if you're going to take it? One says the problem with truma is that when you take the etrog, that's truma, together with the lulav and the hadassim and the aravot, they assume that you're putting your lulavim and your hadassim and your aravot, especially those, maybe not the lulav, in water. Therefore, when you pick them up to take them, you're, they're going to be dripping with water. If you hold it together with your etrog, you're going to make your etrog susceptible to impurity. Because remember, unless it gets in contact with water, it's not susceptible to impurity. Once it's susceptible to impurity, now, the question is, is it definitely going to become impure? Well, it's more likely because the assumption is many people are impure and their hands, yadayim askaniyotem, we say this is why we wash our hands before we eat bread, because we assume the hands always carry a level of impurity because they're always touching things. And therefore, once you get the little etrog wet, you're likely going to make it impure. And that's why you shouldn't use something that's pure truma. The other one says, no, it's because you're destroying truma. By picking up the lulav all the time, you're going to actually cause it to be destroyed. Eventually, after seven days of touching it all the time, it's going to get ruined, and you're not allowed to ruin truma. My binayu, what's the difference, right? You know, it's maybe part of it will come off. So my binayu, what's the difference between them? Let's say you said, my etrog, I'm taking the etrog is truma, but only the inside of it, not the outside. Then, right, well, let's go through. You're still machshir the kabel tuma because if you touch the outside, it'll become potentially impure. And when somebody touches it, they're going to actually make the entire thing impure, including the inside, which is truma. But if by touching it all the time, you're going to ruin it, well, the outside isn't actually truma. And that's the part that's going to get ruined. And therefore, leka, it won't be a problem. What if you did it? It's, then it's so why is that? You can't eat it. Now, maybe you can't eat it because you're not a Kohen, let's assume. But 
everybody's got some relative that's going somewhere, right? I, let's say I'm married to Israel, I can't eat truma, but my parents, my father's a Kohen, my brother's a Kohen, I can always give it to someone, or maybe my son, my daughter marries a Kohen, right? They're, everybody's got some relative or some friend. It's interesting, the commentaries always talk about relatives in this context. It seems like their whole, right? Everything was about a chamula, right? The, the family. You must have some family member that you can give it to, which means it has value that it can be eaten. But Lamanda Amal, Lamanda Amal, Aim Badim Mamon. And what if you say you also not only is it enough that you can eat it, but it has to have financial value? Well, Hareyesh Badim Mamon. Even truma can be used by a coin, let's say, to betroth someone. Okay, can use it to marry someone. Hareyat Mekudesh Ali with this, right? With this food. Okay, you can do that. We'll get all to all that in Kiddushin. But the point is, it has financial value to the Kohen. Also not to anyone, but to the Kohen, yes. Vishal Demai. What about if it's Suffolk, whether somebody, we're not sure whether someone took Truman or Maslo. So can you use this etrop? So we said Beit Hillel says yes, Beit Shammai says no. My time at the Beit Hillel. Why? Because you really can't use this. But what does he say? It is mutar to some people. You could theoretically, you could say, I'm giving up rights to all, I'm a mafkir. I'm saying, eh, all my stuff is hefkir. Anyone who wants to come take it can take it. That immediately makes me a poor person. Since theoretically I could do that, and if I'm a poor person, well, then chazele, then it will be, I can actually eat demai, because we're going to see the Beit Hillel holds that poor people can eat demai. They don't actually have to take trumon masrot, the tithes, if we're not sure if someone already did them, right? It's usually when you get it from an Aretz, you get it from someone who's not careful about halacha, but we assume they generally take truma. We're not sure if they take maser or not. We can assume if you're poor, you're allowed to eat it. Normally, you'd have to take truma to maser, poor person, and we're going to see who else. Hashanami lachem, Korean it right. So because of that, it's also considered lachem. It's considered your own because you could theoretically turn yourself into a poor person in one split second, and therefore it's as if it's your own. Ditnan, how do we know this? It says in a Mishnah, the people who are the, um, an army comes through, right? Uh, if there's a Jewish army, they don't have, they can eat demai, okay? You're allowed to give them demai, or the truth is, no, it's actually the, my mistake, it's the, the Gentiles who come to town. If you have to supply them with food, right? The king says, you have to give food. When they come into town, you have to feed them. You can feed them demai, okay? You, you don't have to take the truman masro before you feed them. Because we understand that there's a big loss for you to have to give your food to the army. So therefore, we don't make you take demai. Uh, take the truman masro. Ubechamai, what about Bechamai? What do they say? Ani lo achil demai. They think that poor people can't eat demai, and that's why they don't allow this. Titnan, it says in a Mishnah, machilin anim demai, the etach sanya demai. That's what we just saw. The Amar Rav Huna, and Rav Huna said on that, Tana, there's a bright tip that says, Bechamai yomrim e machilin metanim, the etach sanim demai. We say it's a machloka Bechamai, but Hill, we've actually seen this sugya before. And that's why Beit Shammai thinks it doesn't belong to you because you can't actually, even if you're poor, you can't eat it and you can't even give it to the king's people without taking the, tithing the produce. Shal Maser Sheni bi Yerushalayim. So now Maser Sheni is going to be just like Truma. It's also, I told you before, it's called Kodesh because it's Kodesh. So you can't cause it to become impure and you can't ruin it. So likewise, we're going to have the same machloket. Lamanda Amar, the one who said before by truma, mipnesha machshira, because you're creating a susceptibility to impurity by putting it together with these wet items. Hare machshira, you're causing susceptibility to impurity. Lamanda Amar, mipnesha mafsida, hare mafsida, also you're causing it to get have a loss, right? You're ruining it by touching it. Ve'im natal kshira, again, now we're going to say, so why is it okay if you did it anyway? If that's the main issue, right? If you say, because it doesn't have hetera chila, well, this does have hetera chila, and therefore everyone will agree you can eat it. But you'd have to say, if you took it, it's okay. That's only according to the rabbis who say it doesn't need to have din mamon. The, I'm sorry, the rabbi... According to the one who says it, it has to have Din Mamon, it would only work with the rabbi's opinion who says the Maser Sheni is your own. For Rabbi Meir, it wouldn't work with them. That's why we said Divra Kol, 
The first part, if you hold only heter achila, then both Rabbi Meir and both Rabbi, the Chachamim say you can eat maaser sheni. Obviously, you're supposed to eat it by law. So therefore, it's okay according to both of them. But if you say it needs dim mamon, then it's only going to work according to the rabbis, because again, Rabbi Meir says it's mamon gavoa, it doesn't belong to you, and this wouldn't belong to you. Okay, now we're getting to the disqualifications. Alta chazazit. Amar Rav Chista. We're now going to have the same structure we had a few days ago, where Rav Chista says, Davar ze Rabbeinu hagadol amaro, hamakom yebozo. Right, the following thing, the great rabbi whose Rav said, and God help him, Lo shanu ele b'makom echad. This is only if it's in one place. Aval b'shnayim u'shlosha makomot kasher, if you remember. Last time we had it, and he said the same thing. He said only in one place, but if it's shnayim u'shlosha makomot, it's a problem. To which the Gemara said, and this was on the Hadas, if you have all the berries, right? You have more berries than leaves. It's only if it's all in one place, but if it's spread out, it's okay. To which the Gemara said, what are you talking about? That's minumar. That's spotted, leopardy, right? That's no good. That looks worse. And then they said, oh, he must have said something else entirely, where it said red, black versus green. But here, we're going to have the same structure where they said it's not possible. It's minumar, same thing here. They say, oh, it's only a problem if it's in one place. But if you have these boil-like things in two, three places, it's fine. So Amalei Rava, Adraba, what are you talking about? It's worse if you have it in two or three places. It's like it's spotted and right, it looks horrible. It's got it in all different places. Of course, that's disqualifying. And therefore, just like when he said this last time, we corrected what he said. Also here, it must be on this later part of the mission. When it's talking about the chazazit, these boil-like things, but if it's on the minority of it, it's okay. And then Amar of Chista Davar Zer Rabbeinu Agadol Amaro Pamakom Yebozro Lo Shanu. When it says on the minority of it, it's good. That's only Lo Shanu Ela B'Makom Chad. Now it's going to be the reverse. It's only good if it's in one place. Avav B'Shnei Mush Lo Shama Kama Have They Kim Inu Maru Pasul. But if it's in two or three places, it looks spotted and it looks horrible and it's disqualified. Okay. You might think, by the way, that last time it was Shnaim Shlosham Komot that he said, and then we changed it to green and black berries and the difference between that. Maybe they got confused and thought the two or three because of this case, where Rav Chista said about the etrog, and they maybe got confused with the hadas. Amarava, the al chotamo, afilu bimashu nami pasu. Okay, Rav says if it's on the top, Okay, the Chotem. There's a bit of a debate what exactly is the Chotemo. Most of the Mepharshim say, not Rashi, but most of them say we're talking about the upper third, like the part where it starts to narrow, right? The etrog at the top becomes narrow till it gets to the piton. At that point, that's where it's Pasul. And even Mashunami, even if it's very small in that area, it's Pasul. This again goes to the top is the part that has to look the nicest because it's the most noticeable. Natla pitmato, Tana Rabbi Yitzchak ben Elazar, Natla buchnato. They call the pitom the buchna, the buchna, okay, which is like a, a pestle like looking. It looks like the pestle, the mortar and pestle, um, right? That's the pitom part, okay? What we call the pitom, I guess they didn't know really it was called the pitom, so they're defining it now as the pitom. Again, there's a bunch of different interpretations. We're going to stick with this one. Niklaf. Also, here we're going to see there's a bunch of opposite interpretations. If it's peeled, it's disqualified. If an etro got peeled off and underneath it turned reddish, it's just, it's, um, it's good. So now they say, but wait a minute, didn't we say, um, didn't we say, if it's peeled, it's disqualified, to which they say, no, if it's the whole thing, when it said niklaf, now I'm going against Rashi. Rashi says the opposite of this, but to me, it makes the most sense to say this. And many of the commentaries say this. I'm not making up my own answer. But if it's niklaf, if the majority, and in fact, most of the Rishonim say this, if the majority, if most of it is peeled off, that's where it's disqualified. If part of it is peeled off and it turns red, then it's kshera, then it's okay. Just because it's reddish, only if only part of it is peeled off, it's okay. Rashi actually says the opposite. Rashi says, Bekula kasher. If the whole thing is peeled off, it's okay. Because it looks, right, what's, it's the opposite logic. If it's only bimiksata, pasul de minumarhu, then it looks spotted, right? It's got like 
peel off here, peel off there, peel off there. It looks really ugly. The whole thing is peeled. It's actually okay. It sounds a little bit like the Mitsori. If you remember the Mitsori, if you have it on your entire body, then it's actually okay because it covers your body. It's not like you have these spots on your body. So it's interesting how they have the opposite approach. It's always the problem. And the Gemara says, low kashya, this is this, this is that, without saying which one is which, it leads to multiple interpretations. We'll end with that for today. Have a great day, everyone.